Hi, this is Richard Shaw from Cradle of Filth, and welcome to my playthrough video of Heartbreak and Seance. You've all been asking for it, so here it is, and this is how to play it. Okay, the guitar I'm going to use for this playthrough is my main live Cradle of Filth guitar, which is the PRS S2SC250. The tuning of this guitar is the regular Cradle of Filth tuning, which is D, G, C, F, A, D. D standard, the regular one we use. Uh, I'll be playing through the Blackstar HT Metal 100 head and a Blackstar 4x12 cabinet. Here's the playthrough.
So this is the intro lead part for Heartbreak and Seance, which I'll play really, really slowly. <laughs> Here's the main riff to Heartbreak and Seance. Well, what I'm doing here, I'm doing um, some hybrid picking, which for those of you who are not familiar with hybrid picking, it's where you use a pick and your fingers at the same time. Uh, very common in country music, not so much in metal, but I remember seeing uh, one of my old ACM tutors, Jamie Humphreys, do this. He's a rock player, and I just really like the sound of it, and I started incorporating it into my techniques and into my songwriting. So this is what it is. It's got a third fret of the D string, a fifth fret of the A string, and my starting points. I'll play it really slowly. This one's a tricky one to play slowly. <laughs> Here's the chorus melody that I play in the background of Heartbreak and Sounds. So starting off on the D string, and I keep doing the same kind of pattern of notes, but I'm going with the bass note of the chords. So you'll see that I play the same melody, but the first note keeps changing. This is the bridge section of Heartbreak and Seance, a uh, very Iron Maiden kind of kill switch engage kind of feel I was going for for this one. So it's all on the open D string, apart from the last part which is on the open A string. Um, and I'm just doing, using a series of pull offs to get that kind of Iron Maiden kind of sound. <laughs> Then, as Ashok keeps playing that one, I keep playing the harmony of it over the top. Here's the solo to Heartbreak and Seance. I'm starting off on the 7th fret of the G string, going up to the 9th and the 10th. Then I go on to the B string, get the 10th fret, but I bend it up to sound the 11th fret, and then kind of work my way down the 11, 10, and 9. Like that, and I re-pick the 9. So all together so far. Then I come down an E major arpeggio, all on the ninth fret, on the B string, G string, and the D string. I kind of let them ring into each other a little bit. And then I come back up an F major arpeggio, on the eighth fret and the twelfth fret of the A string, but then come up the tenth frets of the D, G, and B strings. Like that, so all together so far. And then 
I grab the 11th fret of a B string, then go up to the 15th fret of a B string, bend it up to sound like the 16, but again like before, I come back down chromatically. So the first half of the solo goes like this. Then, to start the second half, I do a big legato run with some taps in it. And broken down, this has got the 13th, 15th, and 17th frets of the B string and the E string, which I'm just using hammer-ons for. Once I get up to the top, I'm gonna tap the 20th fret of the E string. After that, kind of work my way back down. And then I get a hammer on from nowhere onto the B string and come back down. And back down the way I came up. And then without using any picking whatsoever, I'm kind of working my way back down into the regular kind of D minor pentatonic shape that people are familiar with on the 10th fret. working my way back into that. From there, I do start to pick the notes onto the G string and the D string, where I've got, on the G string, I've got 12, 10, and nine. On the D string, 12, 10, and eight. So I go like this. And I'm using pull-offs to get those notes. And then right at the very end, my little finger grabs the 12th fret of the A string and I bend it up to sound like the 13th. Give it a bit of a brighten when I get to the top. So that whole big legato section goes like this. Then I get an E7 arpeggio. And for those of you who are not aware of the E7 arpeggio, I'm gonna play a 12th fret of the E string. I'm gonna get a 15th fret of the B string and a 13th fret of the G string. And I kind of pick them like such. And I let them ring into each other. So that's the G string, E string, B string, G string. Once I'm there, I actually bend the neck. A lot of people have asked me and they thought I used a, a, a whammy bar and I don't use a whammy bar in Cradle of Filth at all. Um, so I actually bent the neck to get that kind of dipped sound. I just push down on it. Push on the neck, but push down on the body at the same time. Just to give it a slight dip, like I have got a whammy bar. Then, just to finish the solo, I'm going into a C minor pentatonic shape around the 8th fret and I'm bending up the 11th fret of the B string. And that leads into Ashok solo. So here's the solo for Heartbreak and Seance. So for those interested in what goes on underneath my guitar solo, um, if you want to play the rhythm part, this is what's going on in the background. And then I do a similar thing underneath Ashok solo, but his is a tone lower. So it's the same chords, but a tone lower with slight different changes, as you're about to find out. So we get a D minor. Then I play a B flat major seven, which the way I'm going to do that is just bring this first finger over onto the sixth fret of the E string. So we still get the same notes at the top. Then I get an E over G sharp. Move that upper fret to get F over A. Move it up three frets to get G sharp over B sharp, technically, for all you theory buffs. But you could see it as G sharp over C. 
of those chords there. Then I'll do a similar thing again, but with a slightly different ending to get into the key change. I'm about to go from D minor to C minor, so watch this ending. And what I did at the end there, instead of going up three frets like I did on the first time, I'm only going up two frets. So this is the whole thing put together. Then during Ashok solo, I do a similar thing but in the key of C minor. The only thing I've done there at the end to get me back into the key of D minor, I'm right at the very end, I just go all the way up to an A over C sharp, which I've got on the 9th fret, 12th fret, 11th fret, bar in the 9th, 10th fret, and again bar in the 9th on the E string. And that gets me into the similar kind of riff, uh, but like a chunky power chord version of it, which goes like this. <laughs> leads me back into the main riff. And that's how to play Heartbreak and Sounds. And cut. I'd best get it now then. <laughs> no, we're just going to start. Okay, you're rolling. This is Richard Shaw from Cradle of Filth, and thank you for watching the playthrough video of Heartbreak and Seance. Please like and comment below, please share the video, and check out the other playthrough videos on YouTube. Just do it one more time, a little bit more slow, that was like so rushed. Was it? Yeah. That's because I'm very aware. Okay. Of it. okay this is Richard Shaw from Cradle of Filth, and thank you for watching the playthrough video of Heartbreak and Seance. Please like and share the comment. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> right, let's start again. This is Richard Shaw from Cradle of Filth. Uh, thank you for watching the playthrough video of Heartbreak and Seance. Uh, please like and share. Oh, we've got one, aren't we? We've got one. We've got one. <laughs> You're only going to get one out of me. <laughs> I'm panicking now. Oh.